and I'm going to share my story with you. Glory to God. You don't know the tears I cried and everything that I have bottled up inside. Sometimes I pray, my prayer don't answer it, but I still hold on. I still hold on to God's unchanging and Father of light, full of glory, spirit of the living God. As I come before your presence, mighty God, as I lift up your name, as I glorify your name, as I honor your name this evening. God Almighty, hear me this evening, God. As I come before you in repentance, God, I've seen knowingly and unknowingly. Father, I repent, mighty God of Daniel, this evening, hallelujah, unto you, God. Oh, God Almighty, for walking away from you, God Almighty, for straying away from you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, for never believing in you, God. Doubting you, God Almighty. Glory to God, Almighty Father. I am nothing before you this evening. My righteousness, God, is like filthy rocks. But because of your grace and mercy upon my life, I can sit here this evening and share my story. Share my story this evening, glory to God Almighty. Somebody need to hear the story, God. Somebody need to know that God is always with you. Somebody need to know that God will carry you through. Somebody need to know that God will provide for you. Somebody need to know, glory to God Almighty, that he never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you're not seeing him, he's there with you. Glory to God. When you're chosen, glory to God, from your mother's womb, no matter where you go, no matter where you run to, God is there with you. Glory to God, because his purpose has to come to light. It have to come to perfection. It have to manifest glory to God Almighty. Even the hardship that you're going through at this moment. I pray God Almighty this afternoon, my life story will change somebody this evening. My life story will put somebody into the driving seat this evening. My life story, God Almighty, will lift somebody out of the miry clear. My life story will take them out of their lonely bar this evening. My life story will deliver them and set them free this evening. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, saturate the atmosphere, God. The devil is going to get mad right now, but we are glad, God. And it's for you and your glory. And once you're happy, God Almighty, this is take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when I'm done, Lord, please take the glory. I'll be satisfied just to see you glorified. Hallelujah. I overcome, God Almighty, with the word of my testimony. I overcome the dragon, the devil, the advocate with the word of my testimony. God, hallelujah, open their spiritual ear, God. Let them don't hear me nor see me, but hear you speaking through me, God Almighty. Let them see you this evening, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. Restoration we call upon this evening. Deliverance we call upon. Breakthrough this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This evening, glory to God, mighty God. I'm going to introduce myself to you. Let me take up this survey ticket here, because sometimes I don't remember it too. Hallelujah. I can take it up. It says, glory to God, chief apostle. Hallelujah. Bishop Cynthia James Moriah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But before I become chief apostle, Dr. Bishop Cynthia James Moriah, I want to take you back, way back. Hallelujah. I'm the eighth child for my mother, Lucille Williams, and my father, Osman James. I was born in a small community, with it was a village, Aceville District, Racecourse, P.O. Clarendon. Growing up, glory to God Almighty, we wasn't rich, but we never poor at the end of the day. My father used to be a union delegate. My mother used to be a domestic keeper. Glory to God. We never locked of anything because of our father provides for us. Eventually, I grew up, I went to Kempsill Secondary, Secondary School, which become high school now. I graduated. Glory to God. I am the only 
girl from a mother that graduated from high school. The rest, some stop before time, some get pregnant in school. I am the only girl that graduated. Glory to God. I move on from my graduation after I graduated in June and I went to live with my sister in Montego Bay, the Argos, a couple of days before my birthday. I was there in Montego Bay, you know, I started to work, glory to God, at the age of 17, because I need my father and my mother separate when I was nine years old. So my mother needed the help. So I said, I need to help my mother. I was supposed to go to school, glory to God. I was supposed to go come college in Montego Bay. But because of my mother needed the help, I said, um, let me go in the sewing industry. I went to art in, in Glen Devon, in Montego Bay, glory to God. And um, I finished there and I started to work on the same Gamex complex in, 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 in Glen Devon. Hallelujah, praise God. And I'm still living with my sister. I get entangled with this um, young guy and we were going on, glory to God Almighty, I get pregnant with my first son. But because of the abuse on him at the age of 17, 18 years old, I couldn't take any abuse anymore. So what I did, I tried my best to separate from him and I get into an relationship. My pregnancy was very young. So no, no one knew that I was pregnant. And I started to date this next guy. So when the baby father came and he says to me, um, when he came and he says to me, if the, when they found out I'm post pregnant, if the pregnancy is, is, I told him no. And so forth, I gave the pregnancy to the guy that I'm now dating. Glory to God. But I knew the pregnancy was for him. But because I want to get out of the abuse situation as a young girl, I decided not to give him the pregnancy. Anyway, I had my son. The guy denied. The guy denied. The one I gave to him, he denied. I had my son. And, but before, let me go, go back a little. Um, When I was pregnant, I was very young. One day I was going down the road, right at Carol Wall in Montego Bay. Ma'am, number two post office. And right there, I hear a screaming. And when I look, it was my sister. She and her boyfriend was having a fight. The guy thumped her in her eye. Knowing me as defender of the universe. So I went and I started to fight the guy. I end up um, use a bottle to burst the guy's head. And I we went all went to the station. Anyway, get back up. My sister get back with her boyfriend. So she decided the boyfriend decided I cannot stay in the house with them. I have nowhere to go. I have to start on the street in Montego Bay. At night, I get cardboard, it would be my bed in, 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 in um, Cornwall Beach. I used to sleep there at night. If it was no, I wouldn't be alive. But then you, you didn't have so many crimes and violence. My bed used to be a cardboard in Cornwall Beach and a stone at my head. Glory to God. I wake in the morning, I have no way to shower. I have to go, glory to God, to the sea, take a shower. And one day I was walking on the road. I looked like a mad woman. And I, one of my cousins saw me and said, what is wrong with you? And I started to explain my situation. And she said, come and live with me because the house is empty. My aunt was, was in, a, in the state. So I went to live with her. And when she found out that I was pregnant, she went to my sister. She told my sister. And she came. And she asked me who is responsible for the pregnancy. And I told her, the guy that I'm now dating, which way the, uh, the guy left me because he knows the pity of him. Glory to God. So I, my sister took me there. I know deep in my heart, the baby is not his. But because I do not want to mix up back with that guy, I did hold on to say it's his time. He there till I, I start, I have to look a job now because I need to be taken care of and my unborn child need to be taken care of. So I found a job on Church Street into a garment factory and I was working there. And I buy everything and everything. My sister took me back in the house. And my pregnancy was advanced now. So she took me back in the house and I was there until I give birth. I give birth and I was there. I started to suffer with my child. And my brother, he died. No, 
he went down to Clarendon and he told my mother what was going on. And my mother sent and said, she's not dead. I must come back home. So I packed up and I went back to Clarendon. And when I went back to Clarendon, my son was six months old. My eldest son now in the state was a military in the state now. He was six months old. And I get down there and I'm there with my son. I'm working, get involved. Where sometimes when your parents know the best, they always say mothers know the best. And when our mother are talking to us, we don't want to hear it. We just want to go ahead and do what we want to do. But sometimes our mothers see the danger ahead of us, what we cannot see. I get involved with this guy now, and I had my second child. He disowned it again. But you know, as my second child is for him, he disowned my second child. And I'm there battering with my two babies, you know? But I'm doing some work. I'm doing some house choice for some people. I'm washing people dirty clothes. I'm sweeping people yard for my children to eat. You understand me? I get a job now and I'm working and I couldn't take it no more because of the pregnancy. So I have to leave the job. And after I, I had my second son, you know, I'm there then. I met this guy now after, which is my three children, Sian, Dian, and Sasanja father. And um, I was dealing with him. Life came a little better when I started to date him and things start to go, you know, along. But still, sometimes I have to go and do some choice, wash people dirty clothes, sweep them yard. Sometimes I can't even take the money because I need things for my children. After the lady did have a shop and I used to go to the shop and I said, when, she, when I finish, I always go to the shop and I says to them, give Give me cornmeal, milk powder. I remember the milk powder and the blue bag and quarter bread, you know. And sometimes, you know, I have to go and there's a man used to live next to me. We have a lot of breadfruit tree. The, the man, a thief, me got thief the breadfruit because the man never give it to me. So I have to thief it when the man in my yard, me got thief the man breadfruit. And I cook it with butter and I eat it with my children. Them. Sometimes my sister-in-law, she will cook and she give me some food like a two dumpling, one fish and a banana and I can't eat it. I have to cut it up and give it to my children my two boys no they were they were good they could eat food so i have to give it to them then i had my daughter deandra glory to god almighty and these things it started to get bad it started to, it, it started to get it, instead of it elevate it started to devaluate and i'm just there you know when i have deandra i started i get into this game where i started to sell flour for cook Glory to God. I will get the Quaker Oats box and I will put two pounds of flour in the Quaker Oats box and I will wrap it with the paper and I will go to the people that will sell Coke and I will trust one ounce of Coke or soft water and I put it in there. And when I put it in there, glory to God, I will sell it and I will make money. Sometimes I don't make anything. Sometimes I will make money. It's a danger to my life. I'm going to take you through the story, glory to God Almighty. I remember, glory to God Almighty, one day I didn't even have a mattress on my bed. I used to use some old cloth, glory to God. And I used to put it on the bed and I used to spread the sheet over it. You know, my mother did left a panel bed and that's the bed I get. And the mattress have some, you know, the mattress them with the wire and I juke me left, right and center. And when the mattress juke me left, right and center, glory to God Almighty, me now, this man says he's going to give me a mattress. So me swap black dog for monkey. Because calling me. I gave my uncle, glory to God Almighty, I gave my uncle the, the, um, the, 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 the mattress and I took the next mattress, you know, I took the next mattress and the mattress that the man gave me, You're muted up as the same. Yes, 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 yes. My son called me and mute the call. He's calling me. I was just talking about him. He's calling me now. Anyway, um, as, as I said, I've swapped black dog for monkey. I gave my father, my uncle, the mattress as my mother died left, although it's full of wire, but it was clean. And I took this mattress from this man that full of chink. Chink it up by me left. It had killed me. I'm a poor pity them chink. Glory to God. I have to throw the mattress. And when I throw it out, I have to use, started to use old cloth again on the bed. The first time I sell the floor for cook, when I get through, the devil have a way to set you for you to win. Let you think it's God. And I get through and I went to Kingston, I never forget. 
We make one million dollar that day. One million Jamaican dollars. We split it up because I was the only female there. The males and we split it up. And my little money when I get, I went to Kingston. And I bought, I bought a, a bed, I bought a gas stove, and I bought a lot of clothes for my children because they didn't have anything. Me, myself, we didn't have anything. I, I remember days we have to wear my brother clothes. Days after wear my bad brother clothes. I remember one time I was going out and I didn't have anything to wear. They have the flip-flop slippers, them little rubber flip-flop, and they bust off and I have to get with some maca, the long maca them and push through it to hold it. And I have to go around by my niece and borrow a dress. Glory to God. And I went up to my sister because they were living better than me. Glory to God. And I beg, I borrow our shoes and I go where I go and come back and I give them back their clothes. Uh, my brother clothes, my brother pants, my brother shirt when you see me dressed tonight. And I'm telling you, my mother like a whistle, my little with something. So, so you know, say clothes can wrap around me three, four times. Glory to God Almighty. But I still fix it the way I, I can fix it because from them time, I'm a fashionist. I mean, know to put myself together. Glory to God. And I try to fix it the way and go where I'm going. But let me tell you something. When my life turned, um, I couldn't take it anymore after I have Sassandra. When I was pregnant with Sassandra, my baby father, he left me. And I was there with four kids, plus I'm pregnant. None of my children reached 10 years old. None of them reached 10 years old. Glory to God. But I was there battering with them. And after I give, before I give birth to Sassandra, one day, you know, I was so angry with myself. Still, I angry with everyone around me. And um, one day I was sitting on my veranda because my mother died left her house and give to me. So I was sitting on my veranda one day and I saw my two sisters because it's a family house. We have one over there. Come on, I have two house. So he gave my bigger sister one and my grandmother house. My next sister get it and the next house I get that one in the middle. So, you know, I have my two sisters next to me and I'm in the middle. But because I'm so angry and bitter with myself, I'm angry and bitter with everyone around me. Glory to God. And one day I was sitting there in my advanced pregnancy. I I'm going 11 months pregnant now. I'm going 11 months. I'm pregnant with Sassandra past nine, 10, and I'm going 11 months. I'm in and out of hospital. Baby cannot come. Glory to God Almighty. And, and my, in 11 months, glory to God. I That was the 21st of July, 1994. It was 11 months. You know, and I and I sat on the veranda there and I was just looking. And I saw my two sisters coming in. And they says to me, all when you bust up with Ed this evening, we now come out of the yard. We come to you. And when they came, Linda, my sister, she died and got me her soul rest in peace. A woman of God, a woman of valor. You know, and she, she says to me, um, this is not normal. This is not, she started to cry. You know, and she said, this is not normal. And my elder sister, Millicent, she says to me, um, don't go back to the hospital because if you go back, they're going to cut you or you're not going to leave. If they cut you, don't go back. And my, she says to me, I know a woman who had a church um, run upon the scheme. I'm going to send you there. And I walk, you know, and I walk through the shortcut and I went there to the lady. And when I went to the lady, she took out a small bottle of olive oil and she prayed and she rubbed my stomach and my back with it. And she says to me, I never forget, she said these words, don't walk where you walk on because the spirit is there waiting on you. Go around the road. And I went around the road. When I reached halfway to my house, I started to feel pain. I started to go in labor. Glory to God. And when I started to go in labor, when I reached home, you know, I said to my sister, the mom in pain. And he said, you're going to have the baby here in this house. You're not going to the hospital. And I said, okay, then glory to God. And then in the night, they call a midwife. Cause you know, in the community, they have midwives. So they called the midwives and she was there with me, you know, and I didn't understand anything about God. You know, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in not in a Christian home, but my grandmother was, was, was a woman of God and we have to go to church, you know, and such forth. When we get big, we depart from it, but I grew up in church, you know, and such forth. And, the woman left because she said she can't turn in the house, in the yard with me because I pay spirit in the yard, my yard full of spirit. That's what she said. So she left me and she left me alone in the house with the kids then. I'm, I'm in labor. But when I felt now that the baby is coming, I came out of the house. And when I came out of the house, I see what the woman was talking about. But I remember, glory to God Almighty, when I was going through, glory to God, if I'm familiar spirits, then I this is the Bible verse I was taught in. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
And I walk and I knock my sister door and I said, I'm ready. And she called my next sister and both of them. And I give birth 11 months on the 22nd of July. 11 months. Glory to God. You know, I'm there with my child. And one day when she was six weeks old, I had three babies. I have Deandra, I have Sian, and I have Sassandra. Roderick and, 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 and Mark, they were about four and five, you know. They all babies, but the three, I took three babies to clinic. And when I took the three babies to clinic, and when I was coming back from the clinic, I saw their father. And he was holding hand with the next woman. And that's when I decided, said, this is it. I'm not going to take any more of it. And what I did, I went home and I started to pack. I have nothing to pack, but I packed the two pieces of check there that I have. And I packed my, my mother dead left some holy pack clothes and I cut one of the jeans. And my mother passed then. And I make a bag and I put my baby clothes in the bag and I ate to Kingston in the night. I didn't, I, I left Roger with my sister. I sent Deandra and Sian by their grandmother. And I didn't have no one to keep Mark. And I said, Mark was about five years old, going to six. And I says to him, listen to me. Nobody want to keep you because you're rude. I know, but I have to go make a better life for you. I cannot stay here. So you know what? You're going to stay in this house by yourself. Six years My old. Mother. Six years old. I said, you're going to stay in this what? house by yourself. Listen to me, people of God. And I'm going to go. When you're hungry, you go by your auntie. When you're going to sleep, you come and sleep. And he said, he said, he never used to call me mommy then. He called me by my name. They used to call me sister. He said, yes, sister. And I left him. And I took this six week old baby with me. And I went to Kingston. And I get a security job. No time I get a security job. And I start to, and I start to maintain, send money now. So this, my sister start to look after him for me now. And I start to send money, send money. And one day I, 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 I'm out of a job. No, because I left my post and went to get some clothes to take my children to, to clinic. And they reported me and I lost my job. And I didn't have any money to send. And my sister packed them up with my brother that died recently and sent them to me. And I have them in Kingston. And I said to my brother, I'm going to borrow some money. I'm going to ask you to take Mark to Montego Bay for me. Take him to his father. This one, I will keep this one, but take Mark to Montego Bay. And they took Mark to Montego Bay for me, you know. And I am there battering. One day, you know, I get involved in the next relationship again. Hmm. Lord Jesus, some jump out of fire in front some jump in a fire. And I get into this relationship. I get pregnant with my daughter now. She's in England. The eldest one is it, that is in England. And I get beaten left, right, and center. I get beaten left. All with the pregnancy, I get beaten left, right, and center. And I say, God, what is this? And one day I went down. I had a little friend. And I went down by her house. I have my baby. And I went down by her house, you know. I didn't have anything to give my baby. And she... She had a baby just the same age as mine, and she made two bottles, and she gave me one. Cause pay breast me, I give the baby pan. When they look for me, they, my mother, that's me look like drunk or be me for me. And she she gave me one of the bottles for my baby, and I give my baby the bottle. And she says to me, she says to me, um, sister, cause her sister them call me. He says, sister, me know somebody who wants to send somebody to England with drugs, you know, that carry it. And the fastest me answer, the fastest answer come out of me. I'm going to say, yes, yes. And the night she took the man to me. Hallelujah. And when he took the man to me, the man gave me a cap so long like this little finger here. And said, I'm going to swallow it. I'm going to swallow it. I said, if the devil open up my windpipe, make it fly, go down there. And he booked my ticket and he sent me to England. And he sent me to England and I went to England, glory to God. And I go through. God helped me to go through. And, he, and I go through and I make the money and I came back, you know, and I went back again and I went back again. That's the money sweet, you know, that the devil making, making, no say, you know, yeah, go back, you know. But it's the last time I was going back, I was held at the airport in Kingston. That was my first prison sentence. I spent eight months in Fort Augustus prison. Came out of Fort Augustus prison, you know, and I decided. My children not going to suffer the way I suffer. Whatever I have to do to let my children survive, they're going to survive. And 
that at the end of the day, I never realizing I was destroying myself and I was destroying my kids. Glory to God. I came out and I went back to England and I start again. I start to make money because this time now I'm doing things on my own. Because the money that I made, I save it and I start to do my own thing. Caramelica, one, one key cook, you know, and I start to make money on my own, you know, and I get held in England with the drugs. Hallelujah, praise God. When I get held in England with the drugs, I was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Glory to God. I sentenced to 20 years in prison and I appeal it. When I appeal the case, two times I went to appeal court and they turned me down. And the third time I appeal again. And one day I went to the, the, the canteen to buy stuff. And when I go to buy, the officer says to me, you can't buy anything because you're going to JC tomorrow. And I said, no, I don't have any quote where I said yes. And she showed me the paper that you're going to JC tomorrow. And I said, okay. I went down back and I said, God, what is this? You know, the morning I get up and I go to the reception and they send me back. They says to me, but before that, I was having a prayer meeting inside the prison. Every night I have prayer meeting, every morning. I am not a woman and not a Christian, you know, but me have prayer meeting and people getting convicted, you know, and they are always saying to me, give your life to God. There is something about you. Every time you pray, tears come to my eyes. Every time you pray, something touch me. I have to cry out to God every time you pray, you know, and people were going home. People were going home, you know, and I was there. And when I went down to the, the reception, the officer says to me, go back and get your stuff because it's not a possibility you will come back because you're going to justice court so it's not a possibility you will come back and I go and I pack my stuff and I took them with me and when I reach justice court glory to God almighty I, I my, my barrister came to me because in justice court you have to use barrister and the barrister came to me and he says to me the barrister says to me um I don't think they're gonna take off anything you know, maybe only two years alone. And I remember I said to the barrister, I'm not going to paint my body white like Michael Jackson. I'm not going to do that. Whatever God says, I know the God I serve, you know, and I went back. They took me back to the prison. They say I have to go back to the prison because it was just a... Um, to check to see if I have any grounds to appeal. You know, and I went back to the prison. When I went back to the prison, I remember Lieutenant Stitchy was in London and tour. And I took off the number the night because it was on the radio station and I called. And when I called, I, he was just going through the door. And I said, and his, his secretary called him back and he came back and he, he says to me, what do you want me to do for you? And I says to him, I have court, you know, I've sentenced to 20 year in prison here in, in England for drugs. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? And I says to him, I want you to pray for me to go home. And he prayed for me and he says to me, I want you to go and read Philippians 4 verse 12 and 19. That's what I want you to read. And I read it and I was on my knees. I take off my clothes when I reach into my room and I was on my knees. I read and I pray and I cry out to God. And I was on my knees until I fell asleep right there in the prison cell. Glory to God Almighty. And when, when I woke up, it was I, the key I hear putting in the door. It was dinner time, but I didn't go for the dinner. I I run to the phone, glory to God. And when I run to the phone, I call the lawyer office to find out what was going on. And the lawyer said to me, glory to God Almighty, Cynthia, I don't know what God you serve, but let me tell you something, your sentence are reduced. Bill, people of God, I didn't hear reduced to what? Glory to God, I don't hear nothing, but I just pass out. Glory to God. In the hospital, you have the medical wings. And when I wake up on the medical wing, I hear the doctor said, I've never seen this happening in Great Britain before. I don't know what God you're serving. Glory to God. And I came back down and they wouldn't allow me to go back on the phone. And I said, I didn't hear what the lawyer said. I don't know what come over me, but I need to hear what the lawyer says. And when I called back the lawyer, he says, Cynthia, um, your sentence has been reduced to three years. Pack your things because I already served the time already in the prison. So he said, pack your things. It is time for you to leave. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I packed my things. Hallelujah. And I went out. 
When I went out, my daughter ended up in care. Glory to God. My eldest daughter in England went up in care. So, you know, after theater, hallelujah, the, the court system again. And I'm there fighting for my daughter. End up lost my daughter. Glory to God. Because you know why I end up lost my daughter? Sometimes don't make haste to make, to make promise to God. Don't be hasty to make promise to God. Because I said to God in the prison, if you release me, I will serve you. And if I don't serve you, take away my child. Glory to God Almighty. And that's the vow I make with God. Don't haste to make promise to God. When I came out, I was a serving God. I gone back to selling drugs. Glory to God. And I lost my child in the system. Glory to God Almighty. My child have given up for adoption. Mighty God of Daniela. And I said, glory to God Almighty. I'm going to leave it right here. I said, God, before my eyes shut, I will find my child. I will find my child before my, uh, my, 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 my eyes shut. And I was there, glory to God Almighty, going on, seeing we're doing drugs, seeing we're doing drugs here until one day I decided to left England because I couldn't take my dad, my next daughter now. That is, I have two kids in England. My next daughter now, I have her there. And I couldn't take it no more from her father. So I decided to leave England because I said, if I don't leave, this man is going to kill me. So it's best me leave. And I left and I went back to Jamaica and I was there in Jamaica until I met my, my Devanja, the one that was here, father. And we there and I remember, no, before I met, yes, after I met Devanja, father, I have Devanja. Then we have a miss up again. And I have to lose because it's, it's, this time it's not, physical abuse. And let me tell you, sometimes people are got abuse is abuse. But I rather to get physical abuse than mentally and emotionally abuse. Glory to God. Because sometimes the mental and emotional abuse, the words that spoken over your life and into your faith, it hurts, it leaves a scar in your mind. And you will always remember that. But when the bruise, you get a bruise and the bruise go, you won't see it again, but because the skin cover, everything come back to normal. But when you get emotionally abused, that's the worst one, glory to God. And I said, I can't take this anymore. And I left and I met this guy from St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And when I met this guy from St. Thomas, I started dating this guy. This guy don't want me to come where him live. So one day I get mad and I said, if you're living in a crab wall, I'm coming in the crab wall with you. And I went up. When I go up there, people of God, they say love is blind, but that's true. When I'm going up there, I have to use my hand on a part grass so like I can't feel me going up. I lie you not. I saw me a plant, I'm a go. And when I go, when I go, if I see the house, you know, when I chop some long posts and you put it across the, the roof and then you put the zinc on top of it and then you put stone. We never see till in the morning when I woke up. Inside the house is a good bed, good just a bedroom set is there. I sit there with him, we eat bread food and curry chicken back, wood fire, a coal stove, you know. And I'm there with him, you know, till I pick up back. And I started to make back money again. I started to travel again. So I fixed the house. Now I take off that roof and I fix the house and I start to do everything to the house now. Fix it up my way how I want it to look. I take my kids. I take Sian. I take Deanja. I take Sasanja with me. I did not take Devanja. Roger will come and visit. Where's my Mark live in America and the next two girls in England, you know. And I have them them sending them to school. They were going to Upper Grove. Deandra and, and Sasanja was going to Upper Grove, you know. And I'm there with this guy. Then I felt like I'm pregnant now. I do the pregnancy test. The pregnancy. Yes. But before that, I was coming here to Panama to do my thing. And normally when I take a shower, I will wash my underwear and I will place it into a bucket. When I'm going to wash, I will take it and I will wash. So I left them there. When I was here in Panama, he called me and he says to me, honey, I wash out all your underwear. And I said, thank you very much. You know? But when I get back home, something strange. I had certain clothes where I wear certain underwear. And when I, I was wearing a comeback pants, comeback pants is very tight. So I wear French cut underwear underneath it. 
And I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. So I says to him, I'm looking for this black underwear. And he said he washed everyone and put it in the drawer. I said, okay, I'll leave it, I go. No pain in my mind. Then I felt pregnant like two weeks after. When I do the pregnancy test, it show positive. I carry on until I say, this is my, doctor says, my first scan. So I have to do my first scan. So I went to do my first scan. They didn't see no baby. You know? I come back home and I says, there is no baby. They say the baby, some people tell me the baby hiding behind glands. Some people tell me my inside of me is fatty. The baby hiding here. Five months. No baby on the scan. When I went for the seven months now scan, and the doctor, he do the ultrasound. He do the insert ultrasound and the one outside. No baby. He took me off the bed and he done that pregnancy test right there. And it showed positive again. He put me back on the bed. And he's tried to do the scan again. No baby. And he says to me, there is no baby there. I said, okay. And I came out. When I came out, I called my niece. One of my niece. And I said to her, come here. I want you to go somewhere for me. And she come. I gave her a picture of me with a big belly. I said, I want you to go somewhere. I want to find out if I'm pregnant. I said, I can't find a baby. And when she go, she said she never. She went to this church in Waltham, some poker church. They couldn't, the man wasn't there. So she said she, she said, was coming back home. And one of our friends here and said, Janet, where are you coming from? And she says, my auntie said, we go somewhere because she's pregnant and then can't find the baby. And the lady looked at my picture and they said, the lady turned to her and said, she's not pregnant, you know, but go where she's saying, you yeah. mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. And when, she went back the next day. 12 o'clock passed. I mean, I said, she called me. So I say, so I say, no, I mean, I look for she call me and she not call me. When I look, I saw a call coming in from my sister. She says to me, where you are? Can you get a white piece of cloth? I said, yes. He said, can you get something to make an altar? I said, yes. He said, I want you to make an altar. I want you to get a bottle of water and put on that altar. And I want you to go to that altar and pray three times a day. I'm going to stand in the gap in fasting in my church for you. But I want you to go to that altar three times a day and pray. And I started to do what my sister said to me. She says to me, call Ivan now. I said, okay. The same niece, you know, she knew, I see the same one. She had two names. So when I call her, she started to cry. I said, why are you crying? Because this time I don't know what is going on. I said, why are you crying? He said, auntie, you're dead. I said, me, you're dead? I believe me, people of God, I don't know where I get this boldness from, but I have this, this thing. You can't tell me nothing to discourage me. I said, me, you're dead? And I remember I quote. Psalms 118, them time they don't even know the scripture says Psalms 118. But I know the verse. I shall not die, but live and declare the work of God. So the God I serve, the son when I sleep. I said, stop your crying, come, me not dead. Stop your crying, me not dead. So the belly big in front of me. So the night when the death angel come to take me warm. I run to my neighbor, glory to God. She's a woman of God, she says. She said she's a woman of God. I run out my house and I run to my neighbor, glory to God. And when I hold down to her and I said, pray with me, pray with me. She flash her hand out of me and run. I said, go and lie down and let God have his way with you. Glory to God. I didn't understand anything. As a woman of God, the morning she came back to me and she says, 25 years I'm in this ministry. And what I felt coming out of you last night, I never felt it before. It was fire burning me. That's why I have to run. I said, no, I know God. I said, even the other day I was talking to one of my friends about it. Me and her, because she was there with me through this journey. 
and we were talking about it and she said to me, Every time I remember you, I tell my friend, because she's a nurse now in Tatola. She said, every time I speak about you with that phantom pregnancy. And she said, with the night, the, the old the woman. And she run. She's no woman of God. And let me tell you something, people of God. I said, I'm going to go on fasting. I go on three days fasting. Nothing worked for me. I go on seven days fasting. Nothing worked for me. I go on 21 days fasting. And on the 21 day, I lift up my Bible six o'clock in the morning. I came out and I lift up my Bible to the east. And I started to read Psalms 109. And when I finished read Psalms 109, I look into the sun. I couldn't see. I come like, Saul that become Paul. My eyes were blinded in the sun. When I look up in the sun and I said, God, I hear dushum, something burst. Here, the water that was coming out of me, black like tar. And I fell to my knees. Glory to God. I fell to my knees. And I started to cry out. And my friend run come. And she holds me. And she says to me, send it back. Anybody do you this, send it back. And you see when she said that, it come like something pierced my heart. I cry out and I say, God, I can't find my heart to do it. I can't find it in my heart to do it. And let me tell you something. That's how I overcome. You know what the guy did? The same guy. He had his woman and I didn't know. And when I finished, fixed the house and furnished it. And when I was here in Panama, they took my hand away. To them, mother bad pan. And they plant me into the cemetery in St. Thomas. Glory to God. But the God I serve, he was preserving me. He was keeping me. He let me fear some battles, but he was there with me. Glory to God. Because he said, you are mine. I've chosen you. I've set you apart. No matter if I come your way. You're going to feel it. But I know you're going to come right back to me. People of God, I don't take heed. I don't take heed, people of God. I've gone back in a jokes as God let me go. I've gone back in a jokes. This time I moved to Venezuela. Glory to God. This time I moved now to Venezuela. Because I met, I, met, I met my husband. I went to St. Anne's to fix my jobs, to take with me. And I didn't drive. I didn't drive. I took the bus. And I don't know why I took the bus. But I took the bus. But God knows why I took the bus. I took the bus. And when I was coming up back on the bus, I hear somebody says to me, Fatty. Come down here, me have a seat for you. I say, you don't even know me. But you have, have, have a seat for me. And I went down and I sat next to him. And he says to me, Jackie, you don't remember me? And I said, Jackie? I said, my name is not Jackie. I said, I had a sister named Jackie, but she dead. And he said, you never used to live in a St. Martins. I have two sons. I said, no, that's my sister, that name, Jackie. Because me and Jackie really look alike. We look like twins. And... He said, hey, and he started, we exchanged number and we start to talk, you know. And we start to talk, you know, and he would start to put argument. And I says to him, listen to me. A two man me have, you know, people are going to be going to straighten. We say, a two man me have, you know, him say, I want to make three. We say, all right then. And then, that's it now. And we start to talk until eventually some miss up go on with the guy that I used to live with and I just get out of it. You know, and I started to date Crickston and you know, I met Crickston. Crickston was in church. Crickston was a seven-day goer in church. When I met Crickston, Friday evening, six o'clock, I can't talk to Crickston until six o'clock tomorrow, Saturday evening. But because of the Jezebel spirit that was within me, I take them and pull him out. Glory to God out of church. I pull him out of church. And then we started to do the drugs. No, we had to do them something else. I went to Venezuela and I'm there. 
Venezuela, Colombia, Venezuela, Colombia, Venezuela, Colombia. One evening I get up, I was going out the next day and I was doing my hair. I'm going to finish doing my hair. I feel a sharp pain in my head. Sharp pain. And I said, and the pain keep popping. And I said, no, this is my pressure. My head going to bust, you know, and I start to scream out. And they called the ambulance for me and the ambulance come and took me. And when they took me to the hospital, they checked my pressure. My pressure was normal. And the doctor started to question me now. And he says to me, have you ever seen anything coming like liquid coming from your breast? And I remember one time I squeezed my breast and there were like milk flying out and I didn't have any young baby. And I said, yes. And he said, I'm going to send you to do a blood test to see something. Because your pressure is normal. I don't know why you're having this headache. And I went to do the blood test. And when I went to the blood test, he says to me, in the blood test, there's a tumor in your body. What we want to find where the tumor is. So they're sending me to do a CAT scan. And when I went to do the CAT scan, they found that there were three tumors in my head. Glory to God. And when I, they said this, refer me now to the big hospital. When I went to the big hospital, they said I have to do an MRI to confirm if it's a good tumor or it's a bad tumor. And I went to do the MRI. And when I do the MRI, they said one of the tumors is in the third layer of my brain. And the next two is not too far. And I'm there, there, my husband came over now. Craig came over now. That time we didn't marry then, then. The time he came over, that's the time we married in Venezuela. You know? And he was there with me. And the doctor wanted to do surgery right away. And he says, if there is any option, the doctor said, yes, you can give me medication. If you don't shrink with the medication, I have to do surgery. And I'm there taking the medication, taking the medication. And one day I was inside the house and I felt blood coming through my nostril. Blood. And when I felt the blood coming through my nostril, I start to get dizzy. I start to get dizzy now. And I said, I'm not going to take the elevator because if the elevator shut off with me, this is a serious problem. So I start to run down the stairs, even though I was dizzy. I run down the stairs. And when I reached the security, I said, call the ambulance for me. And he didn't, couldn't wait on the ambulance to so get a car and they take me to the hospital. I could hear what they were saying, but my, I couldn't speak. And my... I was going, I was going, I was going. One of the two, my bursts in my head. Glory to God. People of God, hallelujah, Jesus. One of the two, my bursts in my head. And I was going. You know, only thing I could hear when the doctor said, she's one of us. And that's it. And when, they, when, when that was over, when I woke up, you know, I couldn't see out my eyes. They were so swelling. My face was big like this, you know, but I survive it. I survive a tumor burst in my head. I survive it again. I survive it again. Glory to God. And I came out of the hospital and everything was normal with me, you know, going back to normal. And I did not stop there and serve God. I did not stop there and serve God until. I was on my journey to the Bahamas where God stopped me here. And I get that major attack where I die this time. And God is saying to me, this is what the lesson that I learned. God is saying to me, I owe your life in my hands. I can cut your light whenever I want it. Or I can let you live. It's a choice I am giving to you now. It's a choice I am giving to you. Serve the Lord with all your heart, all your mind. Or you serve the devil and perish in hell. And that's when I decided to serve God. That's when I decided to serve God until I get the encounter with that angel. This is no dream angel. It's a living angel I saw hold my hand, praying over me. And the last thing he says, if you let go of God, that's the end of you. 
I didn't go to my bed and dream, see an angel. I went into the shower. And he was there and I was coming out back and he grabbed me and hold on to me. Glory to God. This is not a dream. This is reality, people of God. And this is why sometimes you hear me search when me, when me, when me, when me, when me, when me preach and when me shout and when me worship God. I know why. Glory to God. The songwriter said, there are some things that have been true. So let me share my story with you. Some of us just go into a little thing and it come like it's a big house. But let me tell you something. I want to advise somebody this evening. I want to let you know this evening where I'm coming from to where I am today in Christ Jesus. I want to let assure you that God will see you through. He will do it for you once you trust him. Once we trust him, we are not perfect. We sleep, we fall at many times. But hold on. Hold on. The songwriter says, sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Come Jesus, come calling. Let today be the day. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to break. Mighty God, but I'm holding on to a hope that won't fade. I am holding on to that hope. I am holding on. Glory to God. He has brought me through many rivers, many mountains, many rivers on fire. He's good with me. He's there with me. Even when I'm serving the devil, he's there in my corner. You know what this song just download in my system? I decided to follow Jesus. I no turning back. No turning back. Glory to God. I decided. This evening I want to talk to somebody. You might be going through a storm. But hold on. Hold on. I was reckless. I turned alcoholic. Glory to God Almighty. I was sex addicted. Mighty God. Because I have money. I can do what I pleases me. I go out and I go to the clubs. And I see man and I buy them. Just like I see man and I buy woman. And so I buy man carry them home. Sleep with them. Put them out through my door. Because I had money. I could do what I want to do. When I was working for the devil. But God swapped me beauty for ashes. He took the robe and he spotted and he gave me a garment white. I drink, I drive fancy car, I buy any amount of clothes. I can't buy a handbag for 2,400 US or 1,800 pounds because I used to live in England. I can do anything. When I'm in Venezuela, I buy a bag for two thousand dollar, three thousand dollar. I could do anything I want to do. I buy man. I do anything. But when God decided, it's either do or die. It's either do or die. You have to pack up and say, "I'm going home. It's time for me to go home." So this evening, I hope my life story change yours. I hope my life story do something to you this evening. I hope my life story, mighty God, elevate you, lift you. Because some of you are not going through anything and you let it seem like a big thing. But let me tell you something. Trust God. Trust God and live. Trust God and live. Repent or perish. That's my story for you this evening. Heaven bless you all. In Jesus' name. Mighty God, have mercy. Hallelujah.